In the decisive battle of the Galactic Civil War, the Rebel Alliance and the Empire locked horns both on and above Endor. In the centre of the skies stood the incomplete but still terrifying battle station known as Death Star 2, whose throne room played host to the most important battle of them all. In their duel between the Jedi Luke Skywalker and the Sith, it appeared the Palpatine was getting the upper hand, even with his failed attempts to lure Luke to the dark side as he began to torture the young Jedi. In a dramatic turn of events, Palpatine was so consumed in his attack that he failed to anticipate Vader betraying both him and the dark side by saving Luke and he was thrown down the Death Star's reactor shaft. Though he transferred his consciousness to another body, Palpatine lost the majority of his empire and was forced to reassemble the world of Exegol. But what if Palpatine sensed Vader's betrayal? Would this shift the outcome of the Battle of Endor? Or would it in fact benefit the Alliance? The story begins just before the Rebels arrive on the forest moon and Palpatine is seated in his throne room. Having just ordered for Darth Vader to go to the forest moon of Endor, the Emperor knows that the inevitable showdown would be decisive to the fate of the galaxy, but in recent times he had begun to wonder about the true loyalties of his apprentice, as Vader needed to return to Mustafar to re-establish his hatred and perhaps the younger Skywalker would make for a better apprentice. His thoughts are interrupted by Admiral Gallius Rax, and having sensed a potential fate-changing showdown, he ordered for Rax to retreat to the Dreadnought known as the Ravager, in case the contingency plan needed to be executed. Once Rax bowed and left the throne room, Palpatine received news that Luke had proceeded as he had foreseen, and had surrendered himself to Darth Vader. As he waited for the Lambda-class shuttle ST-321 to return to the Death Star, he knew that Luke would try and convince Vader to return to the light, and Palpatine would have to be cautious when they returned. The Sith Lord was also slightly disturbed by an earlier visit from Yoda. Since their duel had met a premature end in the Imperial Senate chamber on Coruscant, he had thought about hunting Yoda down, but as he was not a threat to the Empire in his exile, he had not bothered. The recent death of the former Grand Master had initially given him great satisfaction, and he considered this as the beginning of a total victory, but now he dwelled on Yoda's final words, telling him that he couldn't win. With one of his subordinates informing him that Vader and Luke had now landed on Death Star 2, Palpatine started to speculate if Luke could have been trained under Yoda. His brief moment of surprise at this realisation was replaced by a smirk beneath his hood as he saw this as a chance to prove to the spectre of Yoda that he was more powerful by luring Luke to the dark side and adding another Skywalker to his collection. The Sith Lord could now feel the presence of the two Skywalkers ascending the turbo lift and taking another glance at the battle, he dismissed his guards before allowing Vader and Luke into his room. Subtly using the force to drop Luke's chains, Palpatine beckoned Luke to observe the rebel fleet falling for his trap, attempting to bait the young Jedi into using his anger. Sensing the conflict with Vader and Luke's anger beginning to grow, Palpatine saw an opportunity and firing a brief lightning attack at Vader, he did not intend to kill him but only cause him pain. As Vader's conflict was replaced by pain, then anger at Palpatine, the apprentice staggered to his feet and ignited his lightsaber. Palpatine now stood up from his chair and cackled, mostly in the direction of Vader, declaring that if he wanted to remain as his apprentice, he would have to fight Luke. When the Jedi heard this, he daringly refused to join the Emperor and was about to relinquish his weapon when Vader moved ungainly in his direction. Vader's training under the Emperor had given him an instinct to obey any of his orders, and using the pain from Palpatine's attack to fuel his own, he turned to the reluctant Luke, who now backed away from the throne, occasionally raising his blade to repel any attacks. As he tried to talk Vader away from the path set by the Emperor, they eventually circled back around to the throne, and sensing the Vader's conflict had been dissipated, he needed to find a way to get through to him. With Vader merely standing in front of his throne, and telling them to use their hate to strike down the other, Luke ran towards him and his throne, but rather than attack him, he leapt over them both, and Vader would have cut through Palpatine had it not been for the Sith's anticipation. Palpatine had seen enough, especially of Luke and his stubborn resistance, and firing lightning at the Jedi, Luke tried to block the attack with his lightsaber, but after initial success, he was enveloped by the bolts. Palpatine wanted him to feel and be fueled by his pain, but as he prepared to increase the intensity of his attack, he sensed his apprentice wavering in his loyalties again. Using one hand each to attack Vader and Luke, the extended battle was suddenly disturbed by rumbling from beneath them as the rebels were beginning their attack on the Death Star. 
the rebel forces on Endor had managed to overcome the stormtroopers to disable the shield generator, allowing for Admiral Akbar to make a run at the main reactor. Led by Lando Calrissian, the remaining fighters from the successful attack on the Devastator were causing the partially constructed skeleton of the space station to shake, exchanging cannon fire with the TIE fighters. The trio in the throne room sensed the potential for the Death Star to be destroyed, and the rumbling around them covered the fading screams emitting from Palpatine's console, as his subordinates looked for their leader to provide them with instructions. The Emperor was preoccupied by Luke and Vader, however, who had both managed to free themselves from Palpatine's torture in the chaos, and had entered into a tense truce to fight the greater evil of Palpatine instead of each other. Attempting to use the two sets of view screens to shield themselves, the vibrations from beneath them started to shake the two podiums, and they lost their balance to slip to the lower level. As the Death Star tilted away from the throne, Luke Force pushed his podium to where Palpatine had been, but Vader was still feeling the effect of the lightning attack, and the podium collapsed onto the Sith. Expecting to see Palpatine leering over his body, the Emperor had vanished, and it was Luke who helped Vader remove the podium. With many of the linkages connecting his nerve endings severed, Vader was helped to his feet by Luke, with the Jedi still not totally trusting Vader, and taking one of the four turbo lifts down to the main battle station, Luke saw already larger list of problems increased, as the turbo lifts stopped three quarters of the way to their destination. The wheezing Vader ordered Luke to cut a hole in the floor, and though he briefly hesitated, Luke created an arc with his lightsaber, and jumped down with Vader on his back. Ignoring the alarms and the panic generated by the imminent destruction of the Death Star, Luke sustained his focus to cushion their fall with the Force, and cutting another hole through the stationary turbo lift exit, he dragged himself and Vader to the only remaining Lambda class shuttle. As Luke and Vader escaped from the exploding battle station, Vader felt the presence of the Emperor fading away, and he knew that he must have escaped via one of his secret docking bays, located through a path in the throne room. Both were aware that the rebels would not be welcoming Vader with open arms, but rather with blaster fire. So observing the battle from a distance, Vader spots that one of the Imperial Star Destroyers is still in action, and instructs Luke to land in one of its hangars. Under the command of the highest ranked survivor, Ray Sloan, the Star Destroyer known as the Vigilance, were suffering from both the loss of the Death Star, and now conflict amongst the hierarchy. Sloan was now in a panic and anger fueled argument, with ISB officer Odd Craig, and combined with the CR-90 Corvette homing in on the destroyer, Luke and Vader passed through the TIE Fighters, to allow Vader to escape from the Rebels. As Luke made the descent to the moon of Endor, his mind was in a blur, as he attempted to digest what had happened in the throne room, and the choices he had made. Luke's biggest concern was where and how the Emperor had vanished, as it meant that the war against the Sith and the Empire was incomplete, even with the destruction of the Death Star. He was also equally concerned about Vader, and whether or not he had been redeemed, or if Obi-Wan had been right about Vader being an irredeemable machine. When Luke discreetly landed on the outskirts of Bright Tree Village, Luke was mistaken if he thought he could land on the moon without detection, as he heard the familiar beeping from his astromech droid R2-D2. The Jedi could see that his friend had been recently repaired, and though he knew he would get a full briefing, he asked the droid for its own recollection of the events on the ground. The Golden Protocol droid C-3PO soon joins them, and with R2-D2 short-circuiting, when trying to open the generator's blast door, C-3PO fills in the remainder of the battle. The bravery of the Ewoks and the Rebel Troopers made Luke feel slightly ashamed that he not completed his mission, but most of all, he was uncertain and even afraid of how Leia would react if she had not sensed it already. Guided by his two faithful droids to the village, Luke was quickly forced to confront his fear, as Leia ran to greet him with a face to exemplify concern. Words failed to come from Luke, as he looked for a way to explain what he had done, but thankfully was saved by the force ghosts of both Yoda and Obi-Wan. Turning to face his masters, Luke was surprised to see that Yoda in particular was somewhat pleased by Luke's compassion, whilst Obi-Wan was struggling to believe that Vader had actually helped a young Jedi, when he had shown no mercy to many others. As Leia listened to the tale of the Death Star's destruction, and the showdown in the throne room, she was much less forgiving than Luke, having seen Vader destroy her home planet of Alderaan. Watching as Leia walked back to the Ewoks, Luke knew that his decision would not be a popular one, and addressing the Jedi Masters once more, they asked him to train Leia, and ensure that Vader was actually on their side. Bowing to the fading Force Ghosts, Luke slowly returned to the heart of the village, determined to defeat the Emperor. But whilst Luke's mind was clearer, Vader was having considerably more trouble, Though Luke had managed to guide him to the hangar of the Vigilance, and to prevent capture the hands of the Rebels, his lack of mobility made it impossible for him to move, and leave the Endor system alone. 
hiding himself amongst the supply crates, the ship led the other remnants of the Imperial fleet and travelled to the Anarch system, which Vader knew from his study of Endor was a neighbouring system in the Medal sector. Vader also knew that because of the Emperor's overconfidence, he had deliberately given the Rebels the location of the Death Star as a trap, so the Anarch system was now known to the Rebels. Having selected the Endor system as the location for the Death Star, Vader had helped oversee the Enarch to Endor pipeline of resources, so now he could repair a suit and leave Sloane's destroyer. But as he thought about his escape strategy, he soon realised that without the Emperor, he didn't have a purpose or destination. When Vader had been confined to the suit and thought he had killed Padme in his anger, he believed he had confined himself to a life of darkness, but the existence of Luke had forced him to question his master. Though he still somewhat hated the Jedi, Luke had made him hate both himself and the Emperor much more, and now the Jedi Knight had given him a chance to redeem his mistakes. This sudden realisation made him acutely aware of the pain in the remainder of his suit, and as the ship arrived on an arch, his weakened connection to the dark side made it tougher to crawl out. Before the ship docked, Vader could hear the surviving officers and troopers scurrying around him, and he knew that his location would soon be exposed. If there was one thing that Vader was grateful for regarding Palpatine's training at this moment, it was his experience on Mustafar of rebuilding his armour without the Force. Vader now put this experience to use, and grabbing a chain of mouse droids which scuttled across the corridors, he managed to weld his legs back to his torso, and though he was not perfect, at least he could ambulate under his own steam. Moving gingerly out from his hideaway, the Star Destroyer had fallen silent, so Vader moved away from the main hangar and headed towards the reserve hangar, normally used by the High Command. With most of the command missing or eliminated, Vader manoeuvred himself into one of the Lambda-class shuttles, and hovering above the Star Destroyer, he saw Sloane addressing a large group of Imperials in a small valley in the distance. Landing the ship on an adjacent cliff face, Sloane tried to inspire the surviving forces, and told them that they would fight whilst the Empire still had a pulse, and Vader scoffed at the delusion. Vader had obviously made a noise in expressing his contempt, and the Imperials all turned towards him with a mixture of emotions. Vader knew that some of these officers had undying loyalty to the Emperor, and pretending that he was still under his control, he stated that Palpatine was still alive, but was recovering from injuries inflicted by the Rebel Alliance. Knowing that those standing beneath him would want to fight on, but were far smaller than the Rebels, he continued to inspire them, and offered locations that appeared to be useful, but were actually abandoned and likely to be occupied by Rebels in the near future. The former Sith had more motives for giving these false locations, than just leading them into a trap, as he also wanted to use their devotion to the Empire to try and search for the Emperor. Though Vader had his suspicions, he thought the Emperor would have kept a number of secret locations, and he prepared his borrowed ship with a series of coordinates for potential destinations. But just as he is about to follow the other Imperials off of the planet, he hears the voice of a rebel commander from above, and an entire fleet is descending on his location. Vader had the capabilities to fight the fleet and those on board, but that would only hinder his goal of eliminating Palpatine, and also alienate himself from Luke, so he chose to surrender. The rebel officers were shocked by the towering figure of Vader, emerging from the Imperial shuttle, but as they had expected to see a lesser ranked group of Imperials, they all pointed their blasters in his direction. The rebel commander ordered for his team to lower their weapons, not that they would have made a difference to someone of Vader's power and bravely approaching the former Sith, he wanted to check if Vader was real. Vader understood the suspicions of the commander, as he had once travelled to Tatooine to find a rebel posing as Luke, and after prodding his hastily repaired armour, Vader is escorted to the rebel fleet. It was only because of the orders of the commander that Vader was not met by yet more blasters to his body, and he was placed in a temporary holding cell in one of the fleet's corvettes. With the rebels yet to capitalise on the victory over Endor, the commander diverted his latest high-profile prisoner to the rebel high command, and Mon Mothma chaired what proved to be an intense discussion. The likes of General Kraken, who had wanted to eliminate Palpatine after the Battle of Yavin, strongly believed that the threat of Vader was too great, and didn't believe for one moment that he had surrendered himself without an ulterior motive. Though Mon Mothma had very strong reasons to get rid of Vader, the mixed rebel report of the status of the Emperor were pushing her to interrogate his former apprentice. Just as the command were about to vote on a decision, the centre of their table glows, and the hologram of General Leia Organa rose to greet them with news of the Emperor. 
Laird debated whether or not to tell the High Command of Luke's recollection of the events in the throne room, as she did not want Luke's name tarnished by his choice to save Vader, and now she needed to choose her words carefully. Deciding to tell the rest of the High Command that Luke had seen the Emperor escape in the chaos of the Death Star's destruction, and that Vader betrayed Palpatine before he made his own escape. Leia was reluctant to twist Luke's story, but based off of Luke's account, the High Command now rearranged their plans to prioritise the elimination of Palpatine, so Vader had to be kept alive for now. Still unconvinced by Vader and his change of loyalties, despite Luke's account, the High Command were fortunate that the mission to Enarge had yielded more than just the capture of Vader. The world was a graveyard for starships from nearby systems, and they had found portable force cages, which were normally used by bounty hunters, as well as access to Imperial controlled locations through their Navi computers. Wasting no time in transferring Vader to one of the cages, there were not many people who were brave enough to interrogate him, but Mon Mothma and Leia Organa were not amongst those. Despite Han Solo not wanting Leia to breathe the same air as Vader, the old Oranian was insistent that she had to confront him, and meeting at a rendezvous point in the Endor system, the two determined politicians turned rebel leaders, bypassed the columns of rebel officers, and marched into Vader's cell with an air of authority, which betrayed their real fears. Vader had been meditating during his time in confinement, and turned to face his interrogators, but even from his cage, he could sense that they were not here to place him on trial, but to extract information to hunt Palpatine. Vader correctly discerned that Luke must have told Leia about him, and the two leaders soon inform him that if he helped them find Palpatine, he would be treated slightly more favourably by the New Republic. The former Sith almost laughed at this offer, as he had spent over two decades suffering, and he highly doubted his reputation would ever return, but he wanted to defeat Palpatine more than anything else. Vader told Organa and Mon Mothma of locations the Sidious could visit, such as Exegol and Mustafar, but he warned them that Palpatine would be prepared for anything. After several hours of questioning, the two rebel leaders left the room, and they were replaced by Luke Skywalker, who had already begun the search for Palpatine. The Jedi Knight neglected to tell Vader about the Force Ghosts, and instead told him about what he had felt, during his search across the Endor system. Vader absorbed Luke's observations, and presented with a holographic overview of the battle, he saw the aftermath of the Death Star's explosion. Vader was insistent that he visited some of the locations on the map, and after Luke had gained clearance from the Rebel High Command, he was accompanied by a small group of veteran Pathfinders to scout the Endor system. Combining their own search with Rebel ground troopers on surrounding moons, Vader looked at the Navi computer, and realised that the Rebels had been looking in the wrong direction. The unique characteristics of the Medal Sector meant that the debris of the Death Star would have been drawn away from the surface of Endor, and instead would fall on one of its many moons. Diverting their focus to the orbit of Endor, the search crew circulates around the system, until Vader pointed to one of the moons, which was Kef Beer. The Emperor considered the largely water-based moon as the location for the Death Star, and now they could see the remains of the partially constructed technological terror. The super laser's focus lens was at the centre of the remains, and as the waves crashed around the lens and the other remains, Vader asked for Luke to lower the ship, and they saw the shattered remains of the throne room. Luke and the Pathfinders follow Vader out of the ship, and the former Sith points to one of the side rooms, where a Sith Wayfinder should have stood on a pedestal. Vader was annoyed that he had forgotten about his own Wayfinder on Musafar, but here on Kef Beer, he could also collect many of Palpatine's artifacts, and it also proved that Palpatine was using Exegol as one of his hiding places. Luke was eager to go to Musafar and search for the Wayfinder, but considered that the move could be too obvious, and they had to spread their resources more evenly. This theory would be applicable to most other planets, but from what Vader had experienced from his last journey to Exegol, it was most likely a one-way ticket, even for the most powerful Force users, and they needed all of their resources. As Rebel reinforcements arrived to Kef Beer to continue the search, Vader set course for Mustafar, whilst Luke entered into a meeting with the Rebel High Command, and the news was bleak. The gamble that was taken by the Rebel forces during the Battle of Endor meant that it would take time before they were able to mount another offensive, but time was something that they didn't have, given Vader's information on Exegol's potential power and threat. Their limited network was already occupied with searching Vader's suggested locations, so Luke proposed that he and Vader go to Exegol alone, with the aim to defeat Palpatine like the attempt in the throne room. The High Command all turned to each other with resigned expressions, 
Knowing this was their best chance of eliminating Palpatine, but they did not want to risk Luke, both being isolated with Vader and being put on such a risk fueled journey. Luke could hear the voices of the Jedi Masters in his mind, and he told the leaders it was a necessary risk, and not larger than the stunt he had pulled, to infiltrate the Death Star's throne room. Though Luke's mind was clear, he allowed Mon Mothma to continue their discussions, whilst Leia followed Luke out of the meeting, citing a conflict of interest. In reality, she also knew that Luke would leave for Exegol, regardless of the command's decision, and confronting Luke in his quarters, she warned him to be wary of himself, but Luke promised that he would return to train her in the ways of the Force. Once Vader returned from Mustafa with his Wayfinder, Luke walks away from the Rebel Rendezvous command station and onto a modified Imperial shuttle hastily built on Vader's request. But as they're about to leave the docking bay, Admiral Akbar bursts into the hangar and announces Imperial fleets were moving across the galaxy, homing in on planets which they had previously controlled. Luke's instinct was to leave his own mission to help evacuate the stranded civilians, but as the High Command quickly discussed their next steps, Vader firmly told them that this was a trap. Though he did not know the exact details of the Empire's plan, this seemed to be something that the Emperor would engineer in the event of a failure, and he was quick to contact Admiral Sloan. The Imperial Future Council she had assembled after the meeting on an arch had been blindsided by Gallius Rax, and now it appeared as if Rax was trying to destroy what remained of the Empire. This seemed odd to Vader, if Palpatine was indeed still alive, and this made it more imperative to find and destroy him before he could deploy whatever terror he had planned. Leaving the rebel leaders to organise rescues for those on affected worlds, Vader entered the coordinates on the Sith Wayfinder into the ship's navy computer and left with Luke to Exegol. The previous journey with Ochi of Bastoon had shown Vader the dangers of this path, and passing through the odd hyperspace area, known as the Red Honeycomb Zone, he was face to face with the Summer Verminot subspecies again. Without an entire Imperial fleet on his tail, Vader was able to examine the beast, which swung its tentacles wildly in his direction, as Luke desperately looked for a way around it. Remembering how the Summer Verminoth had dominated his mind, Vader asked Luke to focus on calming the beast, and their combined efforts were able to divert the beast out of their path. Once they had left the Red Honeycomb Zone behind them, Luke managed to get his first look at the planet, and the dark and dust-covered atmosphere was not helping him alleviate his concerns. These concerns quickly escalated when Vader began the descent, for which he had previously been unconscious, and the unique climate of the planet resulted in electrical bolts surging around the Imperial shuttle. The components which Vader attached to his body after landing on a arch were now exposed to the bolts that were leaking to the interior, and soon he fell unconscious, leaving Luke to pilot the ship. Luke almost wished that he was in Vader's position, as he was forced to take control of the ship and negotiate the fierce storms himself, and using all of his piloting skills he had developed on Tatooine, he managed to wrestle the ship to a sliding stop. As he reached around the controls to access the slowly stirring Vader, he felt a cold chill shiver up his spine, and peering out of the window, he looked overhead to see an enormous fleet trapping them on the planet. Vader staggered to his feet, and after several coughs, he told Luke that the Emperor was waiting. Making the journey to the Sith Citadel, Vader began to recover from the electrical storm and they saw the Emperor standing by the building's entrance on an opposing cliff face. The confident Palpatine told them that there was no way in or out of Exegol for Vader and Luke, and soon the galaxy would return to his control, but this time with a regime which was much greater than the Empire and without the weakness of an apprentice. Vader was unmoved by the Emperor's words, as he had accepted his position since the Death Star's destruction, and combined with Luke, they started to create cracks beneath Palpatine's feet. Showing agility that betrayed his age, the Sith jumped onto a pedestal, then onto another plateau, before calling electrical storms from the skies. Vader knew Palpatine was trying to expose his weakness, and running inside to the cloning center to execute his own plan, this left Luke to face Palpatine. Having witnessed the extent of his power in the throne room, Luke knew what to expect and ignited his lightsaber in time to block the lightning attack. Palpatine pretended to be impressed that Luke had learned his lesson before he started to speak in an ancient Sith language. Luke did not waste time deciphering the Sith's words as he wisely followed Vader whilst the Citadel's obelisks began to rotate and after running past a series of fallen guards, he saw Vader lifting a large kyber crystal. Luke was quick to understand Vader's plan, and helping him move the giant crystal, normally powering super lasers, they stepped outside to find Palpatine, 
they'd summon some of his test subjects to attack them. Running past the powerful yet slow-footed clones, Palpatine gives chase at the sight of the crystal and orders some of his ships to track Luke and Vader. With the crystal attached to a winch, Palpatine clings to the hull of the ship before shuffling to the hook of the winch as some ships now passed beneath them. Vader chose this moment to drop the crystal and swerving violently back downwards, they watch as the crystal created a large chain of explosions cascading to the atmosphere where the rest of the fleet also detonated. Navigating through the rubble and falling debris, Luke and Vader finally left the nightmare of Exegol and made contact with the rebel forces. The demise of the Emperor was the beginning of the end for the Empire and with Vader's efforts, the Imperial Shadow Council were swiftly tracked down. Though opinion of the galaxy had not shifted in favour of Vader, he had completed his mission and now it was up to Luke to begin his own mission, laid out by the Jedi Masters before him.